Good evening, Uganda, and welcome to On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. There has been a showdown between Uganda Revenue Authority and the traders in Kampala over what they have termed as prohibitive taxes that are almost taking them out of business. Also, one of their concerns is the electronic resisting system, which they say is not user-friendly, but they also they are yet to understand it. One of the reasons also they are why they are protesting is the methods of enforcement that have been employed by Uganda Revenue Authority. There was a meeting scheduled to meet the president. However, we're now told that meeting is not going to take place tomorrow. And the traders in Kampala have also stuck their guns. They'll be having another protest, a shutdown on Monday, the 16th. This is what is on the table for discussion this evening. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Uh, uh, Acting Commissioner Ibrahim Bosa and also Head of Corporate and Public Relations, Uganda Revenue Authority. Thank you so much for honoring our invitation. It's always a pleasure, Kamara, especially to be on the spot on NTV. We hope we can have some good deliberation for our countrymen so that maybe we can put this impasse behind us. Honorable Paul, Member of Parliament of 2K County, also member of the Budget and Finance Committee in Parliament. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Good evening, Pat Patrick and viewers. Thank you for having us. And Abdul Musije, CEO of Kasita, Kampala City Traders Association. Thank you so much for honoring the invitation. A warm welcome to all of you gentlemen. Thanks, Patrick. And um, I'm so humbled this evening to, to join this discussion. And uh, out there, our viewers, uh, good evening to you all. Let me begin with you, Abel, because you seem to be the man in the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. What is your pain as the traders in Kampala? Uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, in a good language that I, would, I, I would understand, I will, I will not describe the pain, but rather the pains. OK. <laughs> and. Uh, I think that the concerns that we have uh, beyond the efforts that you made in your, in your opening remarks, they are beyond the URA, they are business in general, we have a lot. Uh, they range from, uh, of course, the efforts, its implementation, its applicability, uh, the enforcement. That is the electronic receipting system. E electronic, invoicing. physical, invoicing and receipting uh, solution. Yes. Uh, and then uh, we get to, to valuation, values uh, uh, for our counterparts who are in uh, importation business, uh, import duty, I mean, uh, those, those are taxations. Then we, we are into uh, trade uh, business violations where we, we are looking at uh, our local players out there being on loggerheads with uh, our foreign investors, investors who are in courts. Uh, quite a lot. So as, as, as the business community, remember, uh, uh, currently, we, they couldn't, as, as an economy, we're not doing well. Uh, the purchasing power is so, so low. Uh, our overhead costs, our financial obligations are really enormous. And so uh, it, th th that couple all together uh, makes this business person bridge on a daily basis. But wait a minute. If many of you have talked about IFRIS. And, and yet IFRIS, the little I've understood, it is supposed to be helping you in filing your return in make, to make your business actually better. And, and, and also IFRIS is not another tax. It is just a system that is supposed to help you to do your business better in a nebular of, of sorts. Are, are you just sort of resisting change? Or is it the technology that is a problem? Uh, Patrick, it's on record. Uh, if you do not want to change, change itself will change you. So you, you, have, you have nothing to do about change other than adapting, embracing, and, and you move. When you listen to the cries of, of the businessmen out there, they're actually not against efforts as it is portrayed. I think the emphasis is on two things. The modalities of this application and the implementation approaches. That, uh, that is the center of it all. Because at the end of the day, Patrick, we clearly know, I mean, this is a take error. 
Uh, gone are the days where... I, 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 the modalities and, uh, and implementation, exactly what are you talking about? Okay, so this is what I mean. When you look at uh, the cost of compliance that is imposed on small businesses by this uh, technology, is what is bringing all this. The cost of compliance or failure to comply? No, 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 not failure. We have not failed. For your information, uh, Mr. Bossa will actually tell you. We already have, remember by composition, as Casita Uganda, I am multi-sector, and therefore I do have uh, multiple sectors that do subscribe to me as Casita Uganda. I have manufacturers. Now, people that are running factories, they're actually already on EFRIS, and they're, they are using it anyway. Most of those who are VAT registered, legitimately, VAT registered uh, clients, they are using it. But why this time? And this is a system that was introduced way back in 2019. Why are we making all this noise in 2024? Why didn't we do it then? Okay, so, so w when you look at uh, its implementation, I think the center has been now in Chiku and Nabugabo area, where most of those SMEs are you know, concentrated. So what is the issue around its implementation? In the first case, the modality or the approach of using harsh enforcement measures sparked everything. There is no way you're bringing such a good a good measure, a good system to me. But as you're encouraging me to embrace it, I have five armed people looking, I mean, overlooking at what I am doing. That itself sets off, you okay. know, my mindset. Oh, hold on to your point there. Let me come to Ibrahim Bosa because, I mean, you're in charge of corporate and, and public relations and stuff like that. You want to enforce something on the barrel of the gun and yet you want to get money from the traders? Really? Really? Thank you, Kamara, and uh, to our viewers. Let me create context of what we are dealing with. Currently in Uganda, we have about 56,000 VAT registered taxpayers. To be a VAT re registered taxpayer, that means you have an annual gross turnover of over 150 million Uganda shillings, or 37.5 million shillings in three consecutive months. Usually these are what we call the big boys in industry. That means you can afford to be able to keep books of records, you should be able to account, you should be able to file a return. Now, just for illustration purposes, we did a, a supervision of some of our taxpayers who are already registered on IFRIS. One of them is a, is a, is a restaurant, mid-level restaurant. So we supervised it for two weeks without any form of enforcement. And in two weeks, they were registering 48 invoices. These people were paying 285,000 in VAT in that two weeks. Their take home, that is on average or per day, was 1.5 million shillings. Then we went in for closer supervision. We had our staff actually sitting in their premises to now observe how they use the electronic Complete with your guns, right? No guns, because <laughs> it is in there. Interestingly, in the next following two weeks, with close supervision, on average, they were making 197 uh, uh, invoices. They were uh, paying, on average, every day of their two weeks, 1.1 million shillings as VAT. Their take home on a daily increased to 6.5 million. So what does this tell you? Is that as a country, we have this beautiful tax, like the value added tax and many people are collecting this tax. However, they are not remitting it. Remember that VAT is collected by a business, but not paid by the business. It is transferred to the last final consumer. When you buy a, a kilogram of sugar, when you buy water, when I buy soda, it is we who pay the VAT. The business, their job is to collect it and transmit it to URA. So what these statistics show you, that we have businesses who are actually collecting VAT and actually not remitting it. That is a leakage in taxation in this country. If you look at the numbers, for example, world over, VAT is supposed to be the best performing tax. One, because it's indirect and it's by choice. If you look within the East African region, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, on average, they're able to collect 
35% of VAT contributing to their overall revenue mobilization. Where do we stand as Uganda? Uganda's collection for VAT over the overall collection is 15%. And we have just made the 15% coming from 13.5%. Now, how does a very good tax like VAT, which is an indirect tax really, be performing so poorly? It's because somebody is on the tech and is not remitting. So we said, in doing so, we are supervising the collection of VAT. We introduced a system. This system is a two, a, 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 a two, has two sides of the coin. It helps a business to monitor their operations in terms of stock taking, in terms of how they purchase, in terms of what they sell, in terms of filing a return. But the beauty of that system is that it creates a certain level of transparency that we don't have to depend on manual records. We don't have to negotiate how much you're paying. It is evident for you okay. at, at the end of the let, day. Let me go to the Honourable uh, Paul, because you are a financial and, and budget guru in some sense. Yeah. Uh, this is where you've been most of the time, before you even go to Parliament. Yes. Um, and I'm happy you are here. You have listened to the both sides. Yes. And it was my intention you listen to both sides because <laughs> so that you can come in the middle. But also, you yeah. have another role. You are the man in charge of making these policies yes. where the traders, where they, they feel maybe even the burden is high. What, what do you make of this? Uh, Patrick, I mean, uh, such a, a difficult <laughs> position. Uh, why? Because, um, one, I'm a business person. I'm a taxpayer. So uh, the taxpayers who are outside there will understand me when I, say, when I make my submission. Secondly, I am a legislator who makes, uh, uh, you know, do my, uh, you know, parliamentary roles in passing mm -hmm. laws relating to tax, taxes and tax administration. Then the third one, as a legislator, I'm also involved in appropriation, looking at the budget of the country and looking at the revenue side and how we need to fund our budget. Uh, so, so now I am conflicted everywhere. Okay. But let me submit like this. To our citizens outside there, if you look at um, the uh, projected budget uh, on the revenue side for financial year 2024-2025, URA is mandated to collect domestic revenue up to 31 trillion. Uh, this financial year ending, they are supposed to collect 29.7 trillion. So next year, they have to collect more. That is the mandate we have given URA. And with that 31 trillion, that is what we call the, the resource envelope. But the budget, where is the budget? The budget is 58 trillion. So where do we get the balance of the money from? We have to keep going into the market to borrow. So we keep on borrowing and borrowing, and it's actually getting here. So as a country, and remember also we passed the anti-homosexuality law. And with that law, our friends, who used to give us money, budget support, they are against us. They're now saying, no, budget support will go down. And the Minister of Finance recently did a budget um, adjustment the corrigenda. Uh, uh, the corrigenda, <laughs> and the thing has dropped by 2.7 trillion. That's massive. What does that one mean? It means that some of the, the needs of the citizens that will require funding will not be met. That is what it means, it will not be met. And that also would mean we now need uh, to tighten our belts. You, if you look around us, for example, Kampala CDB, uh, the roads are shambolic. It's a shame to live in this city. But for us to do the work in the city where my friend here live and, the, and uh, our citizens, we need the money to do it. And our, our tax uh, to GDP ratio is now 14%. It's the lowest in the region and compared to other countries. So which means our tax score. We are not as bad as we think. So now let me come to the challenges that we, we have. One thing is that the tax rates are not in, uh, it, it's not, the, the disagreements are not around the tax rates. The tax rate is understood by everybody and all of us are, are comfortable paying. The challenge I think the, which has been between URA and the business community 
is of course the implementation of IFRIS. Mm -hmm. Let me say this again. We cannot have, because we gave URM money to bring in technology to improve on tax administration and creating efficiency in, in managing our taxes. And creating efficiency means closing some of the loopholes that are there. So here is URA that we have mandated it, we have resourced it, we have given it money. They have bought this system to increase, uh, to improve on uh, tax administration. They are applying it to other, other customers. So some of the taxpayers are using a freeze. Then others are not using it. So immediately you have created a serious imbalance. Because if I'm using IFRIS, it means I am paying my taxes well, I, my VAT, I'm paying it. Then you find my neighbor, who is not using IFRIS, is keeping all the VAT, and is not paying it to URA. That's, a, of course, a leakage. But also it will make him able to sell his goods much cheaply. Because now he's not paying taxes on some of the or on his commodities, me I'm paying. So my cost of production is high, I have to sell high for me to make a margin. But for him, he's beating me because he, he can create a difference by the, the, the level of the tax. So he's selling cheaply and his turnover is high. So that is one dilemma that the government of Uganda, through URA, must resolve to bringing all taxpayers to the same position. The, the other thing which uh, we have to uh, look at is that the IFRIS rollout, as you have said correctly, started in 2019. So many customers have already used it. But Kampala <laughs> Central Business District has been a big, a big problem. Okay, let, let me go back to Abdel. Yeah, yes. Because what I hear from you and, and Alia Ibrahim. Maybe if I could say this one and yes. then you can, can, I, you can come in. You are a, in their submission to us as a finance committee. They said, we have listened to our business, our taxpayers in CDB in Kampala. We were supposed to roll this thing out. They told us we are not yet ready. We need to learn this thing. So they poured the URA staff within the CDB. For, to teach these people and learn, and I'm told several thousands of um, taxpayers were taught how to use this thing. Now, this time around, when they came to implement, there is an uproar. So the question is, has URA done enough work to let people understand how to use IFRIS and understand it very well and easier to answer? And I think that, that this impasse must be resolved because other taxpayers are using this thing and we cannot create a system in the country where other taxpayers are paying and others are not. Thank okay. you, Patrick. Thank you. But Abel, if I, what, if I got, I, I heard Ibrahim correctly, when you use IFRIS, you seem to pay more. I mean, you're more uh, compliant and of course URA gets more taxes from you. It appears, some of you, have somehow been exposed. IFRIS has exposed that maybe you have been trying to avoid taxes somewhere and now you can't. Is that one of the problems that you are not even telling us? Because he has just told us how the, the money just jumped all of, all of a sudden when IFRIS is well, you know, followed to the letter. Uh, uh, thank you, Patrick. You see, when uh, Mr. Bosa makes a submission, where I believe he makes a well-researched and justified <laughs> submission. Now, from my end, uh, it is a little different. You see, we are, th there's a mistake that we are making uh, here, I I not only in, in this discussion, but even in this country. You see, when, when, when Mr. Busa mentions of uh, that tremendous uh, growth in, in, in collection, we tend to think that, that, the, that the turnover that they are looking at directly speaks to the business growth in terms of profits and, and all the other things. But hey, when it started from the factories, we, we are here to let you know that the business operations in, in these sectors do vary. And it is very important for us to understand how these businesses actually do run. That's the first thing. Two, 
we are in agreement that yes, in Chikuba and in many other areas, there are those VAT registered clients. Yes, they are there. And they are still onboarding. Even when on the onboarding, we still have some contentions. Because, you know, when it was rolled out, it was mandatory. As long as you, you, you are on the VAT register by then, you are onboarded. Now, unfortunately, there are some people that uh, were onboarded by then at a point where either their threshold had you know, gone down and you don't no longer uh, fit to be on VAT, but of course the system could not, could not detect that as long as you've onboarded. We equally admit that since then, there are others that have grown you know, fit to, to, to get to the register. But hey, we, we are saying, what is wrong with identifying Abel, who is in Nakasero? Who is in Chikubo? Because Yori has got this database. They actually know. So what is wrong with you engaging me as Abel? Remember, this implementation should be in a phased manner. That, that's why even in classes we do graduate. You can, I mean, from primary one, however bright you are, you cannot now be given uh, PROE exams to sit for. No, 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 there's that graduation, which in this case we believe that from these factories, whoever you're onboarding, you can keep monitoring in a phased manner until when whoever you think fits to be boarded is on. But this is where the challenge is. When you look at the enforcement, you see this, this army man and these officers, unfortunately some of these officers are so junior to understand these people's businesses. That's why Man Bosa will testify to this, that the relationship, the handling, while in the field, is actually different from what he would describe. Okay? So, how do you expect a, an, an army man guarding a, a, an officer to get to me, look at my stock, where even uh, more than 50% of the stock might be dead stock, but he doesn't understand. He simply, you know, assumes and is like, no, you're fit to be on Ephraim. That's one. Two, we have registered a number of cases where some merchandise or some packages carried by these carriers, the Bigari, they are, they are, they've been sent, you're getting somewhere, so they are impounded along the way. Where's the EFRIS? This, this carrier doesn't even know what an EFRIS receipt, an e-receipt means. You, you understand? And along the way, where it is distorted is here. You get me with, uh, it's, it's, maybe it's a misfortune. I have a 50,000 receipt that I issued and it's not electronic. Immediately, that qualifies me for a six million penalty. A 50,000 receipt that I've issued and it is not electronic. Mm. It subjects me to a six million penalty. So if I get the first penalty, six million, I get the second uh, penalty. Because I'm on VAT, it means you that you're actually monitoring, you're seeing my transactions, you're seeing the messes that I am. So now, the question is, uh, honorable, uh, 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 okay, M M Mami Bosa, no, not honorable because he's a trader now, he's, he's a business person. Mm -hmm. Let me exonerate him for this. So, is your interest in seeing Abel accumulate the penalties, mm -hmm. or your interest is making him understand the, 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 the system and embrace it? Okay, Abel, Paul, and, 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 Bo and Ibrahim. Hold on to your points, gentlemen, because we're going to take a break. When we come back, Abraham will start right away answering that question from you, Abel. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guests tonight are Abel Mwesiji, CEO Casita, Honorable Paul Omara, Member of Parliament for Otuke County, and Ibrahim Bosa, Acting Commissioner and Head of Public and Corporate Affairs at Uganda Revenue Authority. Before we took a break, Abel had posed a question. And, and one of them, if I remember, is the mode of enforcement. Okay. You know, how and why would you go downtown to meet these traders with the barrel of the gun, menacingly looking at them, and they feel, you know, this is not a state of, of you know, of doing business. Sure. Thank you. Uh, on top of other issues he raised. Absolutely. 
Uh, thank you, Kamara, and to our viewers. I think on behalf of the Uganda Revenue Authority, I need to express our concern and also probably apologize to those who have been intimidated by our staff, especially where we move with security. The security you see moving with our staff are usually there for the safety of our staff. We have been in, in situations where our staff have been compromised or sometimes even challenged in terms of their safety. You remember that our interventions cut across. We are revenue collectors, but sometimes we are dealing with uh, smugglers and things of the kind. But because of that concern, and it has been raised uh, across the, the board, we have received a new directive from the Commissioner General for strategic deployment of our security to make sure that one, they are not visibly uh, in the faces of customers or clients, to make sure that we improve on that harmonious working. So it is work on prog in progress, and I do not think really that that is something that would send people on the street. What I want to tell you, Kamara, is that the future of revenue mobilization in Uganda and in many other countries is through electronic transactions. And the electronic physical receipting is not a tax, but a, an electronic uh, solution to help us monitor the collection of taxes. And here we're talking about value-added taxes. Now let me mention this and see if it rings a bell uh, to even our viewers. Ideally, when we are using IFRIS as URA, we are able to see somebody who is evading tax. We are able to see somebody who is suppressing sales. We are able to see somebody who is dealing in, in, in invoice trading. We are able to see somebody dealing in VAT fraud. All these things become visible because you now have data to deal with. And I think that could ring a bell to maybe some of our businesses we deal with. So just as a classic example, recently what we have done, we took uh, a survey of about uh, a couple of supermarkets that are on the IFRIS, mm. and we found uh, in six months we were losing seven point one billion shillings in VAT. Now remember this one we are able to tell because these supermarkets were on IFRIS. Mm. What happens to those who are not on IFRIS and probably doing the same business? We looked at a couple of uh, packaging uh, and material manufacturers. In the same period of six months we are losing four billion shillings in VAT. You get me? We looked at a couple of uh, sugar manufacturers, and in the same six months, we are losing 2.2 billion shillings. But here we are saying, this is where we have visibility. Mm. But we have other traders who are VAT registered, but probably are not yet using the system. This system creates unparalleled, unprecedented um, transparency and accountability. But you know, the system you're so and passionate about, Abel is telling you, some people do not even know how to use it. Thank you very Instead much. Instead of hand holding them, and that is where as they take their baby steps, and that's you are coming getting. heavy on them. And that's where we're getting. But Patrick, yeah. I think one of the concerns we were told uh, is that the traders in downtown they're saying, ah, 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 wait a minute, this system is too transparent. <laughs> it, so it's like, just a minute, my money is gone. The money which is, which is presumed to be yours is actually tax revenue, which should have gone to URA. Oh, Abel will respond to that. Abel will respond to that. It looks like that. the system yeah. is also exposing them. So what yeah. we're looking at, mm -hmm. we, are, we are managing two things here, and we need to appreciate, and I think we can be able to manage them as a country. One, we are dealing with a, a technology adoption challenge. And I think that is something we need to be cognizant about, even as URA, we need to give it time, we need to handhold, we need to educate the traders to be able to onboard but them. But that's what Abel is telling you, you have not done. And, and uh, well, that's what Abel says, but it's, you know, numbers don't lie. From, Ju from, from November last year, when the Commissioner General was in Chikubo, he promised tax education, he promised new systems to be able to help the traders. We came from EFDs, the electronic uh, devices, mm. and we developed a, a desktop application mm. that you can put on a computer or on a tablet. We developed a mobile app, and these are free, downloadable, and you, you can be able to use. We went on a mass sensitization. Basically, we threw our staff in the CBD. We did over 80 workshops. We visited 110 uh, malls. We went door to door 
basically hand-holding taxpayers on our register, those who actually re uh, recorded, they haven't gotten uh, support from us, are over 15,000. Basically, we, ha we, we, ha we are on a journey to be able to realize that technology transfer, but the challenge is, because it doesn't stop, we, are, we, we have started, and, in, in a, and it's going to happen for a while. With trade, people join and others leave, so it can't stop. Okay. But well, the challenge we see here, mm -hmm. and I think which we have to deal with, is a mindset problem as well. And the mindset is we're having people who are paying taxes for the first time, people who previously had two sets of books. Yeah. One book is for the taxman, and the other book is my business. Here you are coming and replacing it with a solution yes. that puts everything in the open. That mindset change for a businessman to know that you can actually do business and be profitable transparently is something that will take us time and we need to be patient to be able to navigate that curve. Honorable Paul Omara, yes. I've also heard that there are some business people <coughs> who are renting premises and then the landlord will ask them to pay two million shillings per month and then but issue them a receipt of 500,000. And, and uh, you know, yeah. the, the, there's a lot of challenges th they're meeting, and then it becomes difficult for them to reconcile uh, their, their, their business. Uh, I, I think the challenge, the, the challenge we have in this country that we have to deal with is dishonesty uh, and willingness to pay taxes. The second one, uh, Mr. Kamara, is that the mindset change needs really to come alive. Because if you are, you are, you are conditioned in, in, in an environment of trade where you have been receiving all the money, even if the VAT component is there, and you'll be receiving it, and for somebody to come and take it away from you, this, is, this to you is a lot of money. And I can tell you from the days of Jesus Christ, tax, pay, tax collectors have never been liked. Even one time the, <laughs> the, 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 the community collected around Jesus and said, you know, but uh, what is your issue about taxes? And Jesus picked a coin and said, uh, on the coin, so what do you see the head there is for Caesar? He said, okay, if the Caesar pays to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. In other words, Jesus even confirmed we have to pay our fair uh, uh, share of, of taxes. So I think we have to confront and deal with some of these things. And, I, I, and, and people have gotten too used to it. People even, uh, uh, let me say, the taxes on, on rentals. Uh, you have seen a clip from Honorable Miriam Matembe talking about a little <laughs> you know, a kind of apartment or uh, small houses where she has been collecting money now, even your area has gone there. URA has made, you know, put in systems in place and Parliament has passed law to that effect where there are some rates on rentals. If you have to be, be receiving all the money to yourself, just know there's a component that must go uh, to, to, to revenue collection. So, 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 Patrick, here are some of the observations that we have also uh, been made around what is happening downtown. One is that you find a manufacturer wants to work in the entire trade chain. So somebody in manufacturing cooking oil wants to be a wholesaler and then also want to be a retailer. Sometimes a hawker. Uh, sometimes a hawker. <laughs> now we are saying, you know, give something away. Let some people be in the middle there to make money. So now if you're on inference, you just imagine at every level you have to pay taxes. And that's why people begin to feel, uh-uh, uh, this double taxation, I'm paying a lot. Because at every stage there is an increment in terms of, uh, uh, of margin. Uh, which, uh, which is actually eventually paid by the final consumer. Okay. The, the last one, mm -hmm. which we were told, is the people who bring containers. They are intermediating the traders. So the container people come and say, okay, this is what is in the container. The one container is this amount of tax. But what you are saying, uh -uh, we don't want you, the container people, to be involved. You just remove this thing. We say, okay, Omara brought bicycles. The rates for bicycles are here. If somebody brought this. Let this, this uh, taxpayer come, and you uh, you individualize those taxes to the members in the container. But I'm told what is being driving what is happening in Chiku is also the container leaders who have been benefiting from these uh, uh, taxpayers. They have been intermediating. Now they see their businesses going, and they're the ones who also are at the forefront of urging for a strike. Okay.
the container so, so the still con again the container leaders the container leaders you're going to, you're going to, what we are, going to explain who is this who is container these leader. people why don't you <laughs> unpack the container and allow the individuals who have put their goods together to pay their own taxes okay if yeah. if, if, if 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 i listen to Ibrahim and, and honorable paul Omar, one the issue of enforcement maybe coming with guns is because sometimes downtown becomes a hostile territory there are times, I'm told, when uh, URA officials have been, uh, you know, arrested, <laughs> arrested in, in, your warehouse, in your warehouses, in your warehouses. So if you have turned the place, uh, you know, hostile, they will need protection. But also, the technology adoption challenge. How do you respond? Uh, thanks, Patrick. Uh, thanks, Honorable uh, Paul, and uh, thanks, Mr. Bosa. I think in here, we, we have a mixture of, of things. You see, when you talk of mindset change, this is a very big con uh, component that requires you to be very vigilant. So before you come to Abel uh, for a mindset change program or engagement, do you understand who Abel is? Do you understand what he does? How he does whatever he does? So this is where the challenge is. Before you talk of the container leader, I would want to let you know that we have a consolidation process and we have consolidators, uh, the, the group age cargo, because I, I mean it is the order of the day, because with the single uh, container loads where Patrick goes to China and he has a, a container of his own, it is slowly getting away, right? So in the deal course, we have the consolidation, where in a 20 feet container, we have more than 20 people. Now with that, there are systems where you will find that we have individual bills of lading. Now, that is very categorical. As I come, I know how much I, because I have my own, from the other master bills gathered together. So we have the individual bills of lading. But Patrick, this is where the challenge is. With or without the, because the container leading, one, it is out of goodwill. Even when uh, some people, of course, do exploit in one way or the other, but this is where the challenge is. The person that you're coming to change the mind mindset on, on Ephris is the same person who has brought a container from China at a point where he believes that he's going to pay 150 million. Okay? On reaching URA customs uh, 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 at, uh, 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 at the port, as he enters in, in the ICD, He's then subjected to $3.5 dollar per kilo. Now, th that is what now, actually, that's where the emphasis should be, especially by, by, by Yehonar here, mm. Because th th that's where all these problems are coming from. And that's especially on the garments. E e exactly, garments and textiles. So I have brought a shirt or a brazier. Before you give it a higher value, because these values are not standardized, as I go to China, I do not know the value that these people are going to give me. Okay, so you come, you know you're going to pay 150 million. Mr. Boss and the team, they ask for 450 million in a container. Ask him, we have many of them stranded there from December, not cleared. Now, this is the same person whom you're going to find in the shop. He has bank loans. Most of these people don't only use bank loans. We have various sources of this money. Zoner is a business person, he will tell you. We have these money lenders that are people in, in the city called, uh, you know, Mbata. Yeah? Mpaka I mean, he gives you 10 million, but in, 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 in a few days he, he expects 12 million. Because the bank's bureaucracy is too much that the trader goes for that. Now, this is the same person who is paying 3.5 or 5 million rent and it is due because the, the goods are stuck at the customs. Now, for God's sake, if Bossa and the team does not understand the situation I'm in, then which communication do you expect me to really receive? Let me, let me come back to Ibrahim here. You see, there's a new concept in Kampala. It's called the, the Kuyiriba concept. <laughs> do, do you, when, when you are coming with these, some of these solutions, are they understanding, do you understand the local ingenuity within which the business people in Kampala operate, now that they have come up with the term called Kuyiriba? And how do you bring in a container and you, you change midway 
to charge them per kilo, okay. yet it should have been a percentage. Okay. And then a container fee raises from 150 mm -hmm. to 400 million. How okay. do you expect them? No wonder you have almost 100 containers stuck in the URA warehouses. Okay. Now, I think um, for starters, we, we have had some decent engagements with the traders, and these engagements have been able to allow us to learn from them, especially how their business works. Uh, I know that uh, IFRIS was not designed for a person who is doing Kuiriba. <laughs> and Kuiriba basically is that I may have a shop, a customer comes, but I do not have a certain product and I'm able to pick it from somebody else. That happens all the time in Kampala. But what we are, we are uh, having a conversation about, and I do not know why it has proved very difficult for our colleagues to uh, appreciate. One, people who are doing Kuiriba are not the target of IFRIS. I hope you have, understood, you have explained you you to Oliver saying. Polo Mara. Yes, <laughs> they are not the target. They are not. They are not the target. Lying, yes, <laughs> they are not the target of Ifris. But even if you were on Ifris, because we have come to learn that even those who are who are, who are on um, VAT registration also engage in Kuiriba at the end of right. the day. But that means that if I go to somebody's shop and pick an item to be sold to somebody else, at least that person should be able to issue an invoice for it. That makes me now the final consumer. At the end of the day, I may sell it to somebody and make a difference, but that person should have issued an invoice. So the application is possible. We only have to work a little closer for people to appreciate that this does not actually affect them in one way or another. The issues of the valuations. We have had a conversation on valuations, and I think we have made a lot of progress that today they demanded that they needed some level of certainty. In the past, valuations were things that were only known to the customs people. Mm. Today we are publishing the valuations, meaning that you go on the website, you look at a valuation, and you actually go to China to, 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 to buy your merchandise, knowing exactly what value you will have. Every time, these valuations, I think, change now every quarter, and when they change, a new uh, valuation database is put on the website. Let me, let me, Mr. Bosa, through my uh, moderator, I think one of the touching points which uh, he has raised, um, uh, a member of parliament raised it for Kampala, raised it in the house uh, a few days ago, that you import um, a vehicle from Japan, $5,000. True. The vehicle lands here. Now you expected, as he's saying, pr predictable amount of tax you'll pay mm -hmm. on it. But then they will charge you and say, no, no, this vehicle is not $5,000. Oh, this right. vehicle is uh, $20,000. Sure. So, so you pay that your tax is yeah. much bigger Absolutely. than the amount of money you've used to buy this vehicle. That is explainable. And so the issue of valuation, I think mm. you really need to, people to understand. Sure. Because now even members of parliament are saying, sure. you know, we don't understand this. Mm. It's yeah. explainable. But, but also on yeah. the issue of changing from the percentage to kilograms. Yeah, that one is, yeah. that one, that yeah. one is a, it's, a, it's, it's within the law. Yes. I can explain that one. Uh, and Omar, uh, uh, that's Honorable within Omar the law, knows. yes. Mm. But the issue, I think, of valuation, which is, he has just mentioned. Yes. Usually, remember that in taxes there has to be parity and some form of fairness. If you are importing similar goods, for example, one person brings a car and it is $20,000 and another person brings the same car and it's at $5,000, there is a problem there. In terms of customs, if we are in, in, in doubt yes. of, the, of the transaction value that you have presented to us, yes. there are other modes of valuation yes. than we are allowed to use. This is international, yes. uh, based on the guards and the World uh, Customs Council, yes. meaning that if I realize that you all may be going to be selling the same car, but somebody is claiming he was able to get it either at a discount or it was just given to him as a gift. Yes. So we, we may have to use other basically valuation mechanisms, mm. like saying, say for example, can we look at values of similar products? Can we look uh, for like for like kind yes. of products? Yes. Can we look at, if sometimes we look at something and say, could we see what it is being traded for in the market and then work backwards mm. to find? Can we see what others have paid for? That is only when we have a contestation on your transaction value. Yes. Otherwise, usually what happens, the transaction value is the first point of call, and if it is not contested, mm. you will basically get that value. Mm. But you, like you know in Uganda here, many of the people who come for importation, and I think uh, Abel will, will, will tell you, mm. they first hold their transaction values to their heart, and they want to see what is the ruling value today. 
If the ruling value is actually better than the transaction value, they say, ah, use that value. We are good to go. Okay. The okay. only okay. time the transaction value comes to face okay. is I'm, if I'm they realize that the other value is not good for them. Then they come saying, no, 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 I think this is my value. Yeah. So this is the game usually we play. Yeah. But the comfort is one, is that traders have the ability to even um, object yes. to an assessment. Yes. And this can always be investigated. If, the, if there's anything like connivance, within our staff, these things can always be uh, okay. sorted. Okay, uh, Abel, how do you respond to that? No, uh, thanks, Patrick. I think on that very particular uh, point, when it comes to valuation, all the other methods of valuation, they're actually known to us. Mm. But one thing I'm going to put clear mm. is that there is no point where Mr. Bosa, as a tax collector, will ever be in agreement with Abel, who is a businessman, on two things, on the values, Okay, mm. when you get, let me not use now China. I, as a business person, my intention is to look for margins, yes. profits, right? So when I get to China, just the way if I come to Kampara, when I get to Nabugabo, uh, Mr. Patrick, I want to assure you that I'm going to buy a suit that uh, owner uh, Paul is putting on at 500,000. Because of my negotiating power, mm. I've, you know, I've, I've dug deep. I'm looking for something good and that is going to make business to me. But the owner is going to buy the same suit at one million at Grand Imperial. What then happens? When I come before the taxman, he has two things before him. He has the values. I present my invoices. But remember, this is the same taxman who has targets. He's under pressure to collect. They are looking for that, that one trillion. Now, even if I tell him that, look, I am from Nabugabo, for God's sake, this is uh, 500,000 as Abel. He's going to, but, but Tony has just presented the same invoice of one million. When we get to these markets in China, I want to tell you, this suit that he's putting on at, at, at one million, there are even those shops that are going to say it at two million, five million, but there are those even for 300,000. So where are we going to get that harmony? So, 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 so Ibrahim, there's a genuine variation of prices that can happen using his illustration. That is very true, and that is why we usually fall back on the valuation database. The valuation database basically harmonizes. It will put out people who are bringing forged transaction mm. invoices. Mm. It will bring, uh, br uh, save us from people basically who are uh, basically escalating or trying to but what is second giving you market? as an example? Yes. It's not fraud. It's Thank not you. trying to escalate. It's a real uh, common. It even happens in Kampala. The, 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 the transaction, sorry, the database we use for valuation is usually a researched database. That means, say, for example, if it is a pair of jeans, mm. we will have made research to see many of our people shop in these kind of localities. What is the going rate for a gene? Mm -hmm. So that's where we, how we are able to get this. In fact, the last valuation, remember, we are supposed to even to do it together. Mm -hmm. The last research for valuation. We decided, we disagreed on the value of genes. Yes. We said, no, let us get our experts in URA. You fly let's, it. Let's, let's fly. The, let the traders bring their experts. We will fly them on the URS <laughs> cost. We yeah. go do a research and come back and agree on what the value is. You know what happened? Mm. As we were progressing and they realized that actually the, the initial research value was correct, many of them dropped off from the assignments. But the point I'm trying to make <laughs> is that we don't second guess these figures. Usually we have made a research in what's happening in the market and these valuation databases bring normalcy in terms of importation. Otherwise you'll get people who will come, they have been gifted, uh, they will claim to have been gifted items and they want to sell it, it here and probably what trans transaction value will, be, will you be able to use. Mm -hmm. so Gentlemen, it is what it is. Gentlemen, hold on to your points because you're going to take a break and when we come back we shall open the lines that you too who is watching this program, you can be a part of this discussion, you can have your say. We'll be right back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guests tonight are Abel Mwesiji, Honorable Paul Amara, and uh, Ibrahim Bosa. You know, this is the moment when you also you can have your say. You're going to see the numbers on the screen. You can pick your phone and call us and tell us what you think. It could be a business person or maybe uh, somebody who is frequently going downtown or whatever to, to buy goods. What is your experience and what do you have to say tonight? The other issue 
Yes, you, you had something to say before I even ask a question. Okay, I, I just have a small scenario here. Uh, Honorable mm. Mwami Bosa, mm. so why, why we are talking of you people understanding us? Mm. I just have here a, a comment from one of our members. They are, they are in motor vehicles. Mm. So, some, you know how we operate. Mm. So someone goes to a bond, mm. a car bond, you book in advance. So when you book in advance, mm. the, the, you're, you're given a manual receipt. Remember that the, the, the unit is still there, you haven't. Now, so now they, they are complaining. Now, as I give, I'm just a, a booking fee, maybe six million, I'm given you know, a manual receipt. Mm. Now, it takes me three, uh, uh, t three months or two months before I even pick the unit. Mm. But I'm, you know, so now this guy is saying, three times he's penalized six million. Just because of that manual receipt, a, a sale has not been crossed. Mm. You, you understand? Mm. So now, which mindset are we building? Okay, hold. Let, let me take a caller here because I have many people joining us already. I have a call online. Hello. Hello. Okay. Looks like uh, having a technical hitch. Um, well, you have. You, you can keep those calls coming in, and uh, at an appropriate time when we are we are okay to go. Uh, live with your calls, we shall do that. He, he posed a question. I think the penalty, the penalty issue is really a policy issue. And uh, I think because probably we are so accustomed to not doing the right thing, so we are so fearful about penalties. You know, my mindset would be that if really I know I am straight, I'm doing the right thing, a penalty should not have been something to scare. But since it's a very big concern, for me I'm thinking that this is something that can always be discussed. Usually in our engagements, even engaging with the policy people, if it's an issue of penalty, I think that is something that can be discussed. I don't think somebody should go on the street because of a penalty. I think that is something discussable. But the essence here is we have broad tools, we have broad technology to help people even to avoid penalties. Okay. If you're using IFRIS, you will not file late. If you're using a manual system, you are likely to file late. If you're using IFRIS, you will not submit the wrong figures. If you're not, if you're using a, a manual system, you are likely to make errors in your submissions because everything is manual. So you are having this tool that is supposed to help. But let me ask: is it, th th there is a cost it to is it. There's a cost of data, of internet. There's, there's a cost of the gadgets. You know, a trader would always want to to, to make profit. True. So, so don't you think that alone? Because they have to invest in that. True. And and, and the monthly cost of data. Maybe you, you may also want to know that the people who, who first went on to the electronic fiscal receipting, like the, the big boys of the industry, used system to system integration. I hear it ranges between six to three million shillings mm -hmm. to integrate. Mm -hmm. So sometimes there is a cost for you to do the right thing. There is a cost on compliance. What we have done for the traders down here is to make it very cheap that you don't have to buy a second phone. You can actually use your smartphone, download your app, and you have just a small digital printer, and you begin issuing these, these invoices. Meaning that it is routine. It should be something that is second nature. But if people are so worried that I will not issue that receipt, remember, any receipt not issued, that is tax not declared. I just have one question to Mami Bosa. So when it comes to technology, we have these technological faults here and there. I have encountered a number of our members who have actually incurred the penalties as a result of slowing down either of network or technical failures. Remember for us in business, we are very key on turnaround time. By the time Honorable stands and I'm, I'm issuing the receipt, the network is down, I mean, I have no control over what he does. Then in that case, what do you think should be done? Remember his enforcement and the team may not be there to really understand what I might have gone through. Yeah, Paul, how do you, how do you yeah, <laughs> so, the issues so, of so, network. So, so, so uh, I think this is what I should say, that um, there is actually a big gap and URA has a lot of work to do. Because you see, uh, from the way Abel is talking, there is uh, a lot of room for improvement. Correct. And uh, it, when you listen to the customers, we, we, in this particular case, how we the taxpayers are their customers, you need to have empathy and also move closer to understand them. What are the issues? And then uh, they need to do a lot of training for the field staff, the ones who are interfacing with the, it's not, uh, you see, the, 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 the law 
<laughs> gives you a, a lot of powers. Mm -hmm. Now, they say when you are powerful, the last thing you have to use is that power which you have. You can do a lot of other things in between, basically to get the work done without bringing the okay. last card. Uh, let me try it. Attempt yeah. to get another call online. I have a caller online. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, good evening. What's your name? I'm called Musubako. Yes, hello. Good evening. Okay, can you mute your TV so that doesn't send an echo. Just mute your TV or turn down the volume. Okay. Hello? No, no, no. Kindly mute your TV or turn down the volume. Okay. I can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me also ask my technical people to, 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 to lower the, the volume. Okay, go right ahead. Okay, thank you. I'm calling Nigeria. Okay. I'm calling from G. I have two questions. One, I would like to know if the value addition tax is inclusive of everything, even labor, or it is just the value that has been added on like a commodity. I don't know whether I'm being clear. Okay, another one? Another one? I'm on the pharmacy part where I'm seeing the Indians are the importers. What is happening? The Indians are the importers. They have the pharmacies and they are hawking, and no one is actually there for them to pay any taxes. But instead, for us who are settled, to to I think you are listening to your own echo. You should have continued talking until you conclude your point. Okay. So my question is that these are valued as people who are who are our importers and nothing is levied on them. So what can we do as Ugandans who are trying also to come up with our pharmacies but the other people are allowed to hawk? They are the same people who are competing with the with the people within the country. Okay. Um, well, uh, you know, also, let me also put this. I, I came across something. I, uh, maybe, should I say this name? I think Dr. Judith Nalukwago. It says, people good in tax, taxation help me understand VAT tax better. This means I pay VAT, supplier pays VAT, supplier of supplier pays VAT. Isn't that double taxation, given that all people in this chain, up the end consumer, have to show proof of tax compliance? He wants to be educated, uh, Dr. Nalukwago. And then she gives even a, 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 a receipt uh, somewhere in Kibuli. Okay. But you can, together with the caller's issue. Okay, excellent. I think a quick illustration of how VAT works is that, say, if I'm a manufacturer, I will manufacture a product, and as I'm selling it, I may be selling it to a distributor, I will put a VAT component. So that is the first point of yes. VAT. That, distribu that distributor, that's 18% standard. That, that distributor who now purchases, let us say we're talking about sugar, a bag of sugar, who purchases this sugar will have paid 18% VAT as part of his purchase. That becomes their input VAT. So also when they are selling, maybe they're broken bulk or something like that, if they are now selling, they also put 18%. That becomes their output VAT. Now for them as a distributor, what do they give you RA? You get your output VAT minus your input VAT and the difference is what you give URA. Usually there are two positions. If you find yourself in a positive, then there's some money to give to URA. If you find yourself in a negative, that URA means you it. have to claim a from, URA. from URA. Now you go to, for example, a wholesaler who will have bought from this person. They will have also bought within with the VAT 18% imposed on that. So that becomes their input VAT. When they are selling, they may have broken bulk or added some kind of value in packaging and ABCD. If it's a supermarket, they will also add 18%. That becomes their output. Again, output minus input, the difference you have to is reconcile. what you give your A. What that means is that the business actually does not pay VAT. VAT is, does not affect your capital, does not affect your operation costs, it does not affect your profits. Now, 
that goes down and the last person who consumes that product is the one who actually pays the full it's the consumer so VAT the small bits that are charged based on the different value additions on different stages value additions can be two ways it could be in distribution as you are distributing there are various stages of value addition so where we have mature markets for example like maybe in the developed countries where manufacturers can go and open a depot that means they shorten those different chains they can actually come from a factory and go to a depot or to a supermarket where people can break this so at the end of the day VAT is per stage and the person who actually bears the burden is the final consumer that is okay. why we are concerned that if a business has been assessed and we find that you owe 1.8 billion shillings in VAT it only means one of two things you actually got this money and you ate it and that is the public's money but maybe Patrick, I should add also that um, for you to benefit you must buy from somebody who is VAT registered and also selling to uh, uh, of course now it, it, it wouldn't matter actually because now when you sell you, you're already putting 18% you are, you are the recipient of that VAT so your input VAT if you buy from somebody who is not VAT registered there's no way you're going to have that input VAT so it is a very interesting matrix. That's why everybody now needs to be registered for VAT. Because if it helps you to yeah. calculate that spot yeah. on, in that you lose nothing as a business, but you only pay the right amount okay. that needs to be paid. Th there was a plan, uh, Abel, for you to, for the traders to meet the president, which was supposed to be tomorrow. I don't know whether that was true or not, because the PS State House, I saw, I think, a, a tweet from Mr. Chirunda, senior presidential advisor, saying there had never been such a, 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 an appointment made. So what, what actually happened? Uh, Patrick, Were you supposed to meet the president as, as business leaders? Patrick, just in two seconds, uh, before the president's uh, meeting, mm -hmm. I have two things. I would want, I would want to, to be educated by Mwami Bosa the component of VAT. So if I'm a manufacturer, I do produce sugar. Ideally from the cane and everything, by the time I have this sack, I have actually added value to what I have, I have produced. Now, the multiple taxations that they are talking of, if you can be very keen, you will realize that actually some, mo most of these goods in Chikubo are becoming more expensive than they used it to be, and that's what is now breaking this other chain, shortening the chain, to have the manufacturer directly uh, deal with the consumer. Dealing with the consumer. I, I hope you get. Because, you, you see, by the time you add your 18%, because you're a manufacturer, you've really added that value, and you've charged it already from me as a distributor. As it gets to Chikubo, so which value am I still adding? Remember, I'm still charging. So what then happens? Of course, the Chikubo guy, he's going to remit back the, the VAT. But do you realize that is, at, it is increasing the value of the final product, making its price yeah, go price. high? And then people will, will, will avoid to go. You, you realize that? So this is, this, these are some of the things that you it's need to... Observation. You, you understand? Mm -hmm. Now, so some of our counterparts, the, the, the foreign investors who are not that patient, that's why they are now breaking all those chains. The pharmacist has told you. You're in, in manufacturing, you're in Mbali, but because you realize that Abel, who is in Chikubo, used to take a, a, a 10 cartons. Right now, because my price is higher, the client can't, aff can't afford, I'm taking two cartons. You're opting to say, let me have these 100 cartons direct to two. What is it that you're creating? Away from that, to my honorable here, on the budget and finance, do you realize that this VAT threshold of 150 million was established in 1996, repressing the sales, uh, the sales tax something. Oh, Patrick, do you want to assure me that the value of the money that it had in 96 is still the value today, so that we, uh, in order to maintain the, 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 the threshold at 150 million? I, I, I mean, me having uh, a turnover of 150 million, it really does not mean that, yes, I am actually making business. That's why people are falling. These are some of the things that our legislators here need to understand. With his exception, who is also a business person, he might understand that. But it is more to that. To the question, we, we had a meeting last evening with the Honorable Minister, Hajat Minsa Kabanda, who is the Minister for Kampara, 
uh, Ambassador Katunji and many other people over the same communication. I speak for Kasita Uganda. Uh, I have a membership of uh, up to three million, much sect of course. Uh, I, I wonder why I don't have membership from my honorable here. I, I don't know who now advocates for you, or just because you make the laws. However, we did not have any official communication over the same. On the 7th of March, a team led by my board chairman, Dr. Thaddeus Musoke, met the president. Subsequently, the president gave us a delegation of the PSST, Mr. Ramadan Gobi, and uh, the Commissioner General, uh, Mr. John Musinguzi, who met the traders on the 8th at L Loyal Complex Hotel. Now, it was a directive from the president. The president made it categorically that in the month of April after Easter, he, he will prepare to meet the traders, but did not commit on that date. That's why in that communication, Casita is nowhere. We, we, we have straight ideologies, okay? Very informed. And even in the harmonization meeting that we had yesterday at Fairway with Honorable Minister, uh, who was sent by the president, they were shocked and were asking, who gave you the appointment? And even the very people that pronounced that, they could not justify. So it's not true that we are meeting the president tomorrow. And uh, that's why immediately uh, the presidential protocol had to release that statement, which, uh, which I think you, uh, I know you have the copy, to, 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 to uh, wipe away all those errors. However, we as Casita Uganda and the entire business community, we still believe that whatever we are discussing, we've engaged, I mean, uh, he will attest to, to this, that even parliament uh, has, uh, has been engaged, uh, technicals have been engaged, finance, and so we are now looking up to a political solution to some of these challenges, especially which are policy in okay. nature. Let, let, me, let me engage uh, Ugandans who would want to, uh, to engage you. I have a call online, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. What's your name and where are you calling from? Ibrahim calling from Kampala. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Go right ahead. Yeah, uh, I think um, the discussion is put in simplistic way that uh, the business community collects on behalf of government. So first of all, the businessman is actually doing tax administration for government. So in other words, the businessman in addition to doing its business, is helping government collect its revenue. So government needs to facilitate that businessman to do its work. And then two, to make it simple that the businessman is actually collecting and, and it's not a, that tax is not affecting his business, is forgetting that when I produce, the consumer has choice. Consumer can actually decide when the tax is high for the consumer, the consumer will look for a better place to buy the same thing uh, without that VAT. So it does affect the business as well. That's something I needed to add there. Um, yeah, actually, using IFRIS, you make it work very easy for, for URA. If they are... That, that, is the, that is the essence. Actually, he puts a very good analogy because I've been also somewhere where that discussion has happened. And somebody says that because VAT is, is actually submitted or remitted monthly, at the end of the month, you have 15 days because mm. it, the deadline is 15 days after the month you have completed. Mm. So they say in those 15 days, you actually have that money if you're a good businessman, you can actually be doing something with it before you actually submit. And they say that that's, I mean, it, it, it means something mm. for you to hold on to taxpayers' money for that long. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that was just for argument's sake, but he makes a very good um, analogy that, I mean, if somebody is aiding the process, and facilitating the process, what is there for them to be supported with? I think it is. Uh, so, it is so, Abel, you, you, you threatened as Casita to go on strike on Monday. But now that you, with all this explanation, are you still going to strike? Are you still shutting down business in downtown? Uh, I think, Kamala, you need, you need to use the, the, the right language that uh, we, we are also using. If it was uh, to threaten, then we wouldn't even be uh, uh, mentioning when, uh, I mean, alerting. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I think that is a bit different. However, if you can notice the 16th date, mm -hmm. I think it was set way before, I, I think, last month. 
And why was it said? You know, uh, public management is not as easy as you think, especially when it comes to informal sector. Yeah. Y you people should actually be appreciating the work that we are doing. We do appreciate. Uh, okay, we will see how you do appreciate. <laughs> with, with all these concerns being raised, yeah. we will see how. So, when you look at these challenges that our people are going through, and they are all looking up to us, and at the end of the day, it is hard for me, or for my chairman, or other business leaders, yeah. to get a, a substantive solution or response directly. You see, this business person, in the first case, uh, they, they don't want this bureaucracy. Wait today, tomorrow, what? No, 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 it is there and then. He has a challenge. By the time I go to Honorable, trust me, he has a challenge. So here we are. We told these people, let's engage so that by 16th, we could have gotten at least a response. In the case by then, then we will see what to do. Why do we do that? If you ca from the 8th of March mm. up to now, if I can table for you and the engagements that we have had. If we don't get a substantial solution and feedback that is tangible before these uh, 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 traders, then somewhere, somehow, uh, you would not be fair to us. So on the 16th, uh, we are not saying we are getting on the streets, but as leaders, we are containing these masses. Mm -hmm. Because we hear their pain, not only hearing, but even knowing, because we are one of them. But in the case by then we have not gotten any response, then Kamala, I will simply say, Mwami Bosa, Abantu Bombakule Kedde. If someone says I'm going to close my shop, can I go to Honorable and say, Honorable, close your factory? I don't want, uh, uh, I, I want you to, 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 to open and do business because you're saying no Aber. Enough is enough, I'm staying home. It's really hard. But what we are trying to contain is for Honorable. Even if he closes his factory, can he get satisfied that, look, Mwami Bosa knows what I am going through. Mwami okay. Bosa o is okay. on providing a, on a, on a, a solution. Okay, Mara, yes. these are taxpayers. Yes. At the end of the day, they also want to see value of the money Correct. they pay in taxes, yep. you know, on the roads where they drive, yeah. in the school, the schools where the children go to school, yeah. in hospitals. Uh, and when we hear, for, like, the, the recent tax exhibition on how the lucky ones, you, the chosen few, are living large, yes. it, it doesn't make them happy. Uh, Ugandans feel the pain. They are bitter because mm -hmm. there's a lot of abuse, hemorrhage of public resources. Mm -hmm. They are paying through the nose and somebody's misusing the money with a lot of arrogance. Uh, Patrick, you're, you're absolutely right. I think with what is happening now, I think the, 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 the uh, people have put a torch on us as leaders to be responsible, to be accountable, and to lead by example, to remain frugal uh, in our lifestyles, and, uh, and, and, and most importantly, as parliament, when we appropriate, do we put these monies where you know the, the, the people need them, in people-centered things where people actually feel it? So I think it's going to to uh, put our feet on fire uh, on matters of accountability and usage of public funds um, because people are making sacrifices. So I think that is the the challenge we have. If we, if we work so hard to extract that money because the people who are suffering and being abused are the staff of Uganda Revenue Authority. But you remember, they work on our behalf. Mm. So now, when that money now comes into a consolidated fund, how do we use it for the benefit of people of Uganda? Uh, let me, that, let, that, let me hear a voice of, of a citizen on, on who is joining us online. I have a call online. Hello. Uh, hello. Good evening, Mr. Kamara. Good evening. What's your name, sir, and where are you calling from? I'm Robert. I'm calling from Jesus. Go right ahead, sir. Now, my issue is uh, uh, it's good uh, for the IFRIs, e and we, we as Ugandans would like to pay taxes. But the issue is uh, when these people are generating the taxes for us, they don't really know the pain we are going through. They should really at least know the pain that is on ground then they at least know the way they can fetch the, the taxes for us. Then, too, we have a headache and pain with the foreigners. For example, if you go to China, uh, they cannot give you a license to operate in China 
But here in Uganda, every Chinese, every foreigner is in downtown making the small pity business. And uh, they do not know the competition and the fights and the, the really thing that we are going through with those foreigners. They should compare with the China government how they don't give the licenses. But here, when you go downtown, you ask this Kasita CEO, everywhere, every corner, gather and what, what, please do something. Thank you, Mr. Kamau. Thank you very much. Um, but can I answer that one? Yes, please. When, when Honorable Amelia somebody was still the Minister for Trade, mm -hmm. uh, there was a riot in Lira. I was not yet in Parliament at the time, but I came in to intervene and there was issues also around foreigners. The law is actually very clear. The law says that a foreigner should have a certain amount of money and should only be involved in value addition. So the minister told us and said, when they tried now to intervene in Kampala here, to say, you, you, you are from China, you're from India, you cannot do petty trade. You should, the law of Uganda as it is now, allows them only to do value addition, manufacture something. But he said, a moment they started picking them hmm, from the businesses they were doing, then us, the Ugandans, Patrick, you, you would come and said, ah, 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 that's my foreigner, we are working together. <laughs> you grab this one, ah, ah, Abel comes again, no, that's <laughs> mine, we are working together. So you pick all these people, the Ugandans then will rush to say, that is my foreigner. So the answer to the, to the, my friend was asked the question, we the Ugandans, we are our own saboteurs. We pick these people, some of us, we exploit them, we, we use them, we are behind them. So when we go to pick them, then somebody runs and says, is my person. So can we stop that? And can the authorities enforce the law and making sure that we don't have petty, Chinese traders in, in uh, Kampala, they should be manufacturing. That is the law it is. Okay. Uh, unless the system has collapsed. In, in the interest of yeah. time, in the yeah. interest of time, uh, uh, Ibrahim, um, uh, I want you to make your final submission, okay. and then I'll continue like that and conclude with that bell. So thank you very much, Kamara, and to our viewers and the country at large. Uh, as the Uganda Revenue Authority, we are working hard to make sure that we are together hand in hand with traders in this country. We appreciate and basically listen to the pains they have and there are many aspects of tax administration that we have handled and are handling. There are many aspects to do with policy that ha have been escalated to the ministry and I know even some I think are getting all the way to the parliament, especially things to do with, um, with import duty rates. Those are policy issues that are being handled. The very aspect of, uh, of foreigners in the value chain, that is something being handled in there. And we also feel that pain. But we are bringing on board a solution for the everyday trader in Chikubo who is only concerned with, with VAT registration. Uh, we are seeing people who are rioting, people who are selling bananas, people who are selling um, sandals, rioting, and they have nothing to do with, value, with VAT. They have nothing to do with IFRIS. If IFRIS is not really within your, your jurisdiction, why would you be rioting at the end of the day? Because people and are bitter. For, there are so many reasons to be saying, bitter in this town. People prob probably, some people have been misled. Some people think that there is something bad that is happening, that is a new tax that is happening, and we're saying we have this electronic transaction solution, which is called IFRIS. It is here for the good of business. It is here for the good of revenue mobilization. We will teach it to Ugandans. We will handhold Ugandans. We will sensitize Ugandans. And at the end of the day, we will be as successful as other countries have been. We have been here before, Kamara. We had scratch cards. And when we're getting rid of scratch cards, everybody made noise. Even mm. all the parliamentarians said it is impossible. We cannot make a call mm. without we having a scratch card. Mm. Today we have no scratch card and the country is moving very well. Right. So we are going through a technology transfer in terms of adaptation of technology. We will manage that. All right. We are going through a mindset change in terms of how we can run our business transparently. We will manage that. We, we are with Ugandans. We are for Uganda. And I think we can develop Uganda together. All right, Abel, your parting shot. Uh, Thanks, Patrick. Uh, I would want to make this clarification. Let the public not think 
that the dissatisfaction that we are having in the business community is all about EFRIS. EFRIS is just a small component of them. Otherwise, I wouldn't want people to perceive that we are running to the president because of EFRIS. I mean, EFRIS can be, we, we've already mentioned, it's about modalities. However, there are many things that are really hurting the business community. Patrick Kamala, as I finish, I don't find any reason why a Ugandan should get a hundred million and invest in an arcade where he knows that the return on investment is going to take more th than 30 years, yet they are, they are incentives when, when you get into manufacturing. But look, th these incentives are selective in nature. You will, I mean, numbers do tell, mm. okay? Two, we have witnessed a number of Casita members that have transited, that have migrated, that have gone to Kenya, Tanzania, where the taxes are favorable. Remember, they have a cost to advantage and they have established there. We are really losing out. Three, when you look at the high cost of capital, our interest rate, we are fighting with the Chinese who are getting their, their loans at between one and four percent from China, same market, with us who are getting between, I mean, 18 to, to 36. It is not about every salon. Look, he was talking of, of, of the trade violation. So who licenses these investors? It's not Mika Sita, who gives them uh, 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 trade licenses. Where is the competition law? It's not there. And lastly, lastly, if you are an A, within the law is able to surpass these budgets over and over again. So why are these laws selective? Okay, uh, good enough, we are ending with the lawmaker. Some of these things are, are on the law and the policies, and they are not for Ibrahim, they are actually for you. Yeah, thank you very much, Patrick. I think I want to appeal to Ugandans that uh, this country is ours, our, our tax uh, base is still very low, and we should have the willingness to pay taxes. Whatever disagreements which are there, I think we can sit together uh, with URA and, and resolve it. Uh, as Parliament, we are currently looking at the tax amendment bills and will consider them on the basis of their merit. As I think some of them will go through the windows and I don't want to preempt the debate. And um, the, the cardinal thing again is whatever money, little money is collected, let us use it for the citizens' purpose. And because we are accountable, and we must be responsible. So, Patrick, um, I appeal to my brothers from CDB that uh, let's reach a, a, a point of convergence and agree with URA and continue to open the shops for our own families okay. and for our own country. Honorable Paul O'Mara, Member of Parliament for Otuke County, thank you so much. The point of convergence is really needed. Yes. Mr. Ibrahim Bosa from URA, thank you. Abel Mwesiji from Casita, I want to thank you, but most of all, you the viewer, I want to thank you for the privilege of your company. We are a good country and we have good people. Let us understand our responsibilities and our obligations. Good night and God bless Uganda.